I want to talk a little bit about setting up your project in a way that makes sense because I've had this pop up a couple of times specifically with people using my inventory system and I think there's something that I want to talk about here because Unreal has a subsystem system where individual subsystems can kind of function as their own individual game instance classes. And with things like my tutorial series, sometimes I use the game instance as a way that's easily accessible uh, and persistent throughout your game uh, to store functions or variables and people like run into issues because they already have a game instance. And if they try to like merge the project, it doesn't really work together very well. And the solution to that is to use subsystems. Now, there's one huge downside to this entire thing, and that is if I go like into a random folder here and I want to make a blueprint and I look for subsystem, uh, there's nothing that you're going to find there. Because this is a C++ only feature, making these subsystems, I do believe that on the marketplace, or fab as it's called now, uh, there is a plugin that specifically exposes this to blueprint, so that you can make blueprint-based subsystems. So... I'm assuming that if you use that, and I'll leave a link down below in the description uh, to it if I remember and I can find it, uh, effectively everything should still function the same. But if we go into the C++ classes here instead, and I try to make a new C++ class, I go into all classes and I look for subsystem, you can see that it suddenly has a bunch of existing subsystems. The topmost class of which is just the subsystem, you're likely going to use one of the children of it. Uh, a dynamic subsystem, a game instance subsystem, that's the one that I like to use. But you also have like the local player subsystem, a world subsystem. For the most part, uh, the game instance subsystem and the world subsystem are the two that make the most sense. Or maybe the local player subsystem. I must say that this feels like something that might be relevant if you like making a multiplayer game. It's something that I don't really like play around with too much. So that might be using this that I am overlooking at the moment. But for the most part, game instance subsystem just has the lifetime of a game instance, meaning that it gets created along with the game instance when the game is first booted up, and then exists as long as the game keeps running, and then when the game gets closed, only then does the subsystem disappear. So it is effectively just an instance of a game instance, is the way you can think of it. A world subsystem is kind of like a level blueprint, in a way. This is a subsystem, that's an object that gets automatically created anytime a new world is loaded. So, anytime you open a new level, you will get a fresh new start with a subsystem that's a world subsystem. So, if it's supposed to be a subsystem that tracks information from within the world, and you change to a different level, obviously all the data from the previous level probably isn't necessary anymore. So using a world subsystem makes sense in that case. For me, I use a game instance subsystem for my inventory, which you can probably actually see. Uh, we have here the inventory subsystem. That's the subsystem that I made. Now I will open up my C++ code for you real quick. And you can see this just has a bunch of uh, functions. In it. it has one uh, singular variable that I use. Aside from that, for me, this is just a place that you effectively just can put a bunch of functions in and for me i've made almost all of these functions actually i think literally all of them uh, at this point are uh, static so that they're easy to call from within the editor but you don't necessarily need to do that once you have a subsystem uh made and you have like either variables or functions or whatever on that it's as easy as just going into literally any blueprint in your project and you can get the inventory subsystem, which is just a reference to that subsystem that we made. So from here, we can now access all the variables or functions that we have on that subsystem. So if we uh, go back again, I have this item drag drop widget. So I can get item drag drop widget, or I can set it. And I can do that easily from anywhere in my game, because again, this effectively is just a game instance that doesn't conflict with pre-existing game instances. Now, because I made all of these functions uh, and their u-function static, I don't even need to do that. This doesn't really have to do with subsystems necessarily. This is just like the C++ code side of things. Uh, but I can just get the save inventory anywhere that I want. 
uh, because it is a static function. But if it wasn't a static function, I could very much get it out of uh, here. As you can see, I still can get it from here. So I can do my save inventory or save inventory from object. I can still get that from the subsystem. It's not necessary, again, because it's a static function, so it's just callable wherever you want in the editor. And the wonderful part about this is that it lets you segment your code in very much easy to slot in ways. Nothing about this subsystem is inherently linked to this project. As you could see, as a matter of fact, in my C++ code here, it is in a plugin folder. I am making this entire thing to work as a standalone plugin. So I can take it out of this project and put it in an entirely different project and it will just work. So it is important that if you are going to do this, you architect your code in such a way that your subsystem itself doesn't have dependencies outside of, in this case, the inventory plugin. What you're kind of looking for, if you have like an entire project, right? is to have a handful of these subsystems in your project that might handle like your inventory, right? And maybe one is for like world generation, if you have like a procedurally generated world and one is for like something else, right? We have a bunch of different subsystems. What your project itself is going to be doing is just taking these subsystems and then linking them to Together. These shouldn't interact with each other directly. Only through code outside of them should they be put together to make to work together to create your final game. That way you can easily take this inventory system and when you start making your next game, you already have your inventory system as an entire working subsystem. So you can just slot that in and get going. This is a little bit of a different type of video from what I usually make. This is more of like a PSA, like, hey, guys, this functionality exists in Unreal. We're not making anything like specific here. I just want everybody to be aware. And this is one of those things where it is a C++ only feature, uh, aside from maybe the Blueprint plugin that exists to allow you to do this in Blueprints. So it might be a good reason to like start exploring a little bit more with C++ if you're a purely Blueprint only user, because there are things like this that you just simply cannot easily do with Blueprint that in the long run do make your life as a game developer just a bit easier. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. And of course, an extra massive thank you to my Cave Digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, and my Cave Student tier supporters, Oiku and Earl Monsville Erno.